Billy Isaacs, feared underworld enforcer, rumoured to be linked with the notorious Adams crime family, acquitted of a professional murder in 1995, sent to prison for three years for possession of live ammunition in 2006. He was an ex-professional boxer, was close with Ricky Hatton, got in the ring and challenged Big Gary Sayers for the governor title and was found dead at the age of 45 in his home in Ireland. And he once offered to shoot me back in the early 90s, which I'll get to in a minute. A man like that would never go around the bad guys being around his face, ever. I told you, set the fire on August, empty his mouth, me and Barry said for the making of the belt. And you better take him apart in two months and keep him that belt, never find him again. And the only time I'm going to give that belt back is when his team went worthy to fight for him. So that was Billy challenging Big Gary Sayers for the governor title. Now apparently in a previous show it had kicked off between Billy and Gary Sayers and um, they had to be pulled apart. So big shout out to, to Darren, John and Kev, I think they were there with Billy that night. So it kicked off, there was a bit of a grudge, Billy got in the ring to challenge Gary. In the ring with Billy there was Joey Pyle Jr and my old mate and my old training, trainer uh, Ricky English. Put a link in the description for the full video of Billy in the ring because he talks about Lenny McLean in that as well. So it's quite an interesting one to watch. So Billy was from Manchester, but spent a lot of his time in London as well. He had a brief professional career, two fights, two wins. But I think a back injury put him out of action. Here you can see him fighting Larry Pert. He puts up a good performance here. It shows his heart because he gets knocked down, gets off the floor to win the fight. Quite an exciting fight. So you can see that he's got the, the fighting heart and he's up for a good scrap. He was a close friend of Ricky Hatton and Bob Shannon. And Ricky Hatton said of him, he was a great inspiration and used to help my training sessions. He helped local youngsters get off the streets and into shape. He also taught them to be respectful to others. He is a credit to the sport. Also Bob Shannon, the respected trainer, spoke highly of Billy saying, don't judge a book by the cover. Of course, Billy's a very hard lad but he's got another side to him. So when Billy initially came to London, he worked doors, he did debt collecting jobs and various other muscle type work. He was with Dave Courtney, stayed with Dave Courtney. You know, he was like... <laughs> Old school, yeah, you don't yeah, see man. that a lot nowadays. No. Um, Billy Isaacs as well, who passed away. Billy, Billy Isaacs, you lived with me when he first came to London. He lived in my flat, me and the brothers of work. We lived together for a year. What was, Bill, what was Billy like? Because I've, I've never, there's no interview with him. Absolutely hilarious. Very, very funny. Um, he could afford to be a bit of a show off and a bit cocky because he was a tall. Yeah, a proper tall. But he was very out of the ring than in the ring. You know, but I know he's quite good in the ring and all that, blah, blah, blah. But outside, rolling about the floor, putting someone's door through and running in, doing the deck collecting, what we were doing when I was with him. Um, fearless, another one just yeah, wasn't in there, the dread of it wasn't actually in there. I've seen him get in the ring to offer Gary Sayers out, I don't know whether you were there. Yeah, I was there. Uh, you were there, and you got in and... Yeah, yeah, and he would have thought you Gary Sayers that minute, he would have thought yeah, that minute, yeah. I think they kicked off. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't think there's any love lost between them. No. Very funny man, brilliant at Liverpool because good little money earner. Yeah, good little money yeah. earner, he had, he, had, he had a very attractive swagger about him, yeah? when, you, when you're internally that confident in your own abilities and he's a big six foot, whatever, good looking bastard. Yeah. He had a beautiful swagger, yeah? Yeah. Confident. Boy, yeah. you know, and so, and, and being around certain people, you can, you can feed off them, yeah? Yeah. you can feed off their confidence yeah. and he made me, everyone, all my boys are bigger than me, I'm the littlest one a lot, but he, he grew me. Yeah. yeah. As, as do you, man. Yeah. yeah in, in our younger days. Yeah. Yeah. Having you beside me made me a little bit more swaggery. Yeah. Right? But Billy Isaacs was someone that yeah. you genuinely felt, felt an awful lot safer when he was around and he was on your side. So in the year 2000, Billy was named at the Old Bailey as being an associate of the notorious Adams family. This was due to a corrupt CPS clerk who was being investigated for corruption and it was alleged that the corrupt clerk had met with Billy at service station to hand over sensitive information regarding investigations and inquiries into the notorious Adams family. In 1995, Billy was acquitted of the professional murder of Pat Hayes. 
in the year 2006, he was found guilty and sentenced to three years when the police found live ammunition in a sock in his car. Once again, as usual, I always say I don't condone or glorify any of these crimes. Uh, as I always say, there is no good outcome to violence uh, and crime. So yeah, I, I no way am I glorifying it. These are just the facts and I've been asked to do videos on Billy for quite a while. So we get to the part, why did Billy offer to shoot me? <laughs> now, uh, back then, this was when I was about 20, 21 years old. Me and Billy had never met, didn't know each other at all at that point. We'd never heard of, he I'd never heard of Billy. He'd never heard of me at that point. And um, I had a friend, uh, a, a, fr a female friend uh, from Milton Keynes. She'd gone down to London and uh, one of the nightclubs there. She f uh, went to one of the nightclubs, met Billy, and she started to go out with Billy. Now, I went to it, walked into a nightclub in Milton, oh, sorry, I was walking out of a nightclub in Milton Keynes one evening, and I saw my friend there, who was now, I didn't realize, was now with Billy Isaac. So I said, hello, how you doing? And uh, we exchanged normal pleasantries. Somebody in my company, uh, a female who was drunk, then started to have a go at the girl. So it's only verbal. I then got in the middle as usual and just broke it up and said, what are you doing? Calm down. And I was, nothing happened. It was just a few verbals. And then we just left, we left the club anyway as we were going. Apparently, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my friend had gone back to London and um, not realizing the reaction that Billy was gonna, was gonna give, I just told Billy, oh, I was in Milton Keynes and I, and I saw a friend of mine and some girl um, had a little go at me. <laughs> Billy then said, do you want me to go out there and shoot him? And uh, <laughs> luckily for me, uh, she said, no, 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 I'm friends with Matt. And um, it was all, she, she said, no, no. But um, not the sort of geezer you want on your case threatening to shoot you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was all smoothed over. And I only found out um, about this about four or five years later, I bumped into her again and we were having a chat and she said to me, do you remember when um, I had a little argument in the club that day? And I said, yeah. She said, I went down and told Billy and he offered to come up and shoot. <laughs> and I was like, well, although me and Billy didn't meet, never met, uh, one of my loyal subscribers, I'm going to give a big shout out, Mankman, is related to Billy. And uh, I remember he said in a message once, he said, if you and Billy had met, uh, he would have got on with you and he would have liked you and respected you because he, he respected fighters. Um, but we never did get to meet. We crossed, we just missed each other a couple of times at boxing shows in London, um, but we know we didn't meet. Billy was actually found dead at the age of 45. He moved over to Ireland, uh, County Cork, near County Cork, and he had his place over there, gated place. And um, he was found dead after climbing through a window. He got locked out and he climbed through a window and fell and was, was found dead. No, Lee said nothing suspicious, but he passed away at 45. And uh, I've got a lot of friends that knew Billy, uh, as you see for Dave Courtney knew him, and I've got a few other friends that know him. So shout out to all those, all those lads and Mank Man. So yeah, please like, share and comment. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm trying to do one on Dan Rooney as my next video. I found quite a few bits of footage I'm hoping I can use. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to everyone whose footage I do use, little snippets and put links to the channels as I do in all my videos. Everything on here, I will put a link to the channel and to the video so that the views, you can watch the whole footage, uh, the boxing match with Billy. I'll put a link to the description as well. And just wanna say thank you to all my subscribers, really going well at the moment. Uh, it means the world to me, all your support, uh, all your likes, comments, shares, and, and all the subscribers, it really means a lot. And I'm uh, back on track again, hopefully. Uh, well, I am back on track. And yeah, looking forward to doing more videos. Now I've got that creative um, inspiration back and I'm not fuzzy headed anymore. But yeah, just wanted to say thank you to everyone and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Let me know how you're doing in the comments as well and see you soon.